Number one, I love the Lord. Can't do nothing about that. Number two, I love my family. Don't come between them. And number three, I only said two, but that third one is so important. I love you. As far as I'm concerned, Pastor Colazar, I like him already. He bought me dinner this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we did we, we, we we're real good. No problem at all with that. Uh, I, so so we, we, we're good. Everything that we do will not only be made in prayer, there is a synchronism that will take place. So when I speak, He's already speaking. He is my pastor. Please keep that in straight. Not only will I love him, I will respect him as the senior pastor here. So if you got any desire in your heart to come to me before going to heaven, just know. That thing is going to be reversed. I got another glory over there. Hey, Kat. Yes. I know that you're looking at the clock. But you can't put a mic in a pastor's hand and tell him to be only a little bit. Your Bible is in your hand, whatever kind that you have. If you will turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Can I warn you, don't mess with God. He will mess you up. <laughs> you think you know what you're doing until you ask Him. Then you don't know what you're doing. He will mess you up. I am thankful for all of those who are here conference officials, it's really uneasy to have all of these preachers and all of these leaders up there. You've got to do something with this. So pray for me as we do. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to start reading at verse 18. The word of the Lord says, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together Groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together in for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. If you just have to have a subject, for your information, let's talk about you are no longer wandering exiles. Let's talk to the Lord. Speak, Lord. We will listen in the name of Jesus. Amen. 1979, I got out of the military. I was totally out of character. Had no idea what I was going to do. Did not have a job, but because God said you ain't growing in the military, I got another place for you. I stepped out. As though I knew what I was doing. No place to live. Newly married. Only four years. And yet, I stepped out. We are sometimes forget, saints of God, why we're here. 
We sometimes forget that we exist for such a time as this and for such a situation as this. It seems like we never really, really fit. We never really get our feet on the ground. Every time we start doing one thing, something else comes along. We never see how important we are. And therefore we make ourselves important by doing things that we think make ourselves look good. But I come by this point to let you know that you are important. You are important to a movement that's bigger than us. How do I know? Let me read that same text from the Message Bible. The Message Bible reads thus, He treated us as equals, so made us equal. That through Him, we both share the same Spirit and have equal access to the Father. Can I, can I go on? That's plain enough, it says, isn't it? You are no longer wandering exile. The kingdom of faith is now your home country. You are no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name as Christians as anybody else. God is building a home. He using all of us, irrespective of how we got here and what he's building. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ as the cornerstone that holds all of the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built up by God, all of us built into a temple by which God will feel quite at home. You are no longer wandering exiles. Can I talk to you this morning? It's afternoon already, so if you get tired, stay with me for a little while. I want to remind you that you fit here. I, I want to remind you that you are not a stranger here. You are important to God and His plan to finish this work. You are a part of the vineyard that God called you. The importance here is that you have nothing to do with the leadership that comes. You have to know where you fit. You have to know that God has called not only us, but for you, for a person. He has a personal invitation to the wedding feast. He has a personal uh, a bank account with your name on it. He has a list that is made up of all of the names of grace that are not merited by you, but God saw fit for this day and this time to have you here for a particular reason. We have access to the treasures of heaven. Through his son, God's invited us to bring all of your trials, all of your temptation. He didn't expect us to burden other human beings with it. So he says, bring them to me. I have the privilege now of reading books. I like reading. So I have a book that I'm reading called Incredible Grace. Yeah. Incredible Grace. It caught my attention. And I said, let me see what this thing is. I know about grace. Had to have it all of my life. But this one says, the book says that we as human beings, our greatest problem is to believe that we, we have not gone too far, that God has not accepted us. Our problem is that we keep wondering whether that thing I did, whether it was last night or ten years ago, has separated us from God. And it tells us that we spend more time trying to get somebody to like us or for us to like somebody so that we can believe that we are worth something in this earth during this time. Saints of God, God has assured us that we are no longer wandering exile. I want to drop three things in your spirit this morning and I'll be gone. First of all, you are created for a purpose. Second of all, it doesn't matter what God had to do to get you. He'll go there. And the third thing that we have is heaven will never be satisfied 
life until you know how much he loves you. Can I work with you this morning? First of all, God says through him we both share the same spirit and we have equal access to the Father. I can go to the Father just like Jesus can. He says to me, come boldly before the throne of grace. I have access to God just like his son. Most of humanity spend their entire life trying to convince, even after you've been married 42 years, you still sometimes have to wonder, what can I do? What have I done? Have I done something so bad or so hideous that i got to convince her that I still love her? What is it going to take? Do I have to get her a new car? A bigger house? Do I have to go back down to Nemo Marcus or Dillard's or whatever? What is it going to take? What do I, when do I recognize that I don't have to wonder no more? I know where she's going to be when the sun go down. I know what's happening in Turbo Crack because we pray together every day at 12 noon. I know what's happening at 6 in the evening. The home is coming together to pray. I by somebody else and that I'm okay. Saints of God, this has been God's problem throughout the ages. Ask Adam. He, when he messed up, he asked, where are you, Adam? God has to come back and convince us that you are okay with him. God, he asked Moses, Moses, why are you running? Noah, he asked him, I need you to do something for me. Even after you've gotten drunk and messed up and killed people. Samson, I still want you to save my people. Even after the Bible and mess your head up. Elijah, what you doing here? I showed you that I can handle those thousands of, of prophets there. Solomon, what you need from me? And when you ask me that, I'm going to give you more than you asked for. Jacob, what's your name? What? I love you so much that I'm going to change your name. He asked Isaiah to go down and tell people that I'm coming back soon. Jeremiah, tell them know that I'm your righteous. He even got out and got Peter, Paul, and John, the sons of thunder, and told them, if you follow me, I'll not only increase you, I'll make you fishers of men. Paul, why do you persecute men? Deborah, I want you to judge my people. Rahab, I don't care what your profession is. I'll rescue you from that stuff. He told John, Wait a minute. We are 
just like the ones that God called friends. He called David a man after his own heart. That rascal was nothing but a... Uh -huh. But God saw something in him. Oh, now don't, don't, don't look around. All of us got a little David in us and a little Peter in us. And, 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 and we know that we will mess up in a minute. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, all you got to do is step on the coin on the left foot. <laughs> and and you'll hear some words. <laughs> yeah, we think we have been converted until the vice get tight. And then we'll find a way to make things happen. Even in the midst of that, God says, you are no longer wandering exile. You still my buddy. You still my friend. Unlike me. Mm -hmm. I said, if you hit me too many times, I ain't coming back around you. I may not talk about you. I may not even go back and hit you back. But I ain't coming back. Just for you to keep hitting me. Oh, no, I ain't by myself. As a matter of fact, most of you are only hit once. Either you ain't coming back or you're going to have to pick somebody up. You've been invited. You are a citizen. You are part of the household of your God. Your name is on God's guest list. Come on, man. I'm ex-military. I don't take nothing. As a matter of fact, you don't even know when I'm, or where I'm going. Because I don't get mad. I get even. Oh, yeah. So before you know it. That's the way I used to be before I understood that I am not an alien from God. I don't have to go back and try to get him to love me. He already does. I don't have to go back and try to prove myself to him. He already sacrificed for me. I, when I was planning the wedding, I had you in mind just because of who you are. You hear it all the time. God oh, don't make no jump. Well... What make you think that you are any less than the other person? Just because 